Hi, I'm Professor Lynn Ritchie. In this video, we're going to continue to explore the ideas of George Herbert Mead and symbolic interactionism. How do we organize and control our behavior? Mead uses the terms acts and social acts to help us understand this a little bit deeper. Let me describe some of my morning behaviors. I have the most pleasant alarm clock, three dogs who come and visit the side of my bed every morning around between 3.30 and 4.30. They'll stay there until I fling the blankets off me and say, let's go get cookies. I'll put my feet on the floor. I'll walk 25 steps to the kitchen. I will reach in the cookie box and bring out three cookies and give one to Doc, one to Ringo, and one to Annie too. Then on the way out of the kitchen, another probably 10 steps, I'll pick up my tablet and I will go over by the TV, turn that on to listen to the morning news with the clicker once you find it. And then I will do a series of Sudoku puzzles from easy as pie to annoying. Then I'll walk about 10 steps over to the kitchen, make sure the dogs have water. Then I'll walk back and get them some kibble for the day. I can continue to detail my morning behavior, but it becomes tedious. Mead suggests that we group our behaviors together into acts, and our acts are based on the objects and social objects that are our focus. For example, getting ready for work is an act, and the objects might include brushing our teeth, taking a shower, finish primping and styling our hair. So acts are a series of steps that we take to accomplish some purpose. Acts will have a beginning and an end. They organize and control our behavior. Let's take a look at the four phases of an act. The first phase of an act is impulse, and this occurs when an existing act is disrupted. So if I'm sitting relaxing watching television and I hear a bell ring, the ringing bell would be the impulse. And I have to ask myself, what is ringing? This takes me to the second phase of the act, which is perception. And this is where we identify the objects and social objects that will give direction to our behaviors. At this stage, I would be asking myself, what is the source of the ringing? Was it from the TV, my doorbell, my laundry, or was it the telephone? Once I identify the source of the ringing, I can move to the next phase of the act, which is manipulation. During the manipulation phase, we are taking specific actions to return to our original act of relaxing. Our manipulation may involve another series of acts. The final phase is consummation, and this is when we return to our original act of relaxing. Our days consist of a series of acts and acts within acts. An act becomes a social act when we interact with at least one other person. During a social act, we are coordinating our behaviors with others based on shared assumptions about the social objects. During social acts, we are anticipating the responses of others. Interaction is a mutual agreement about what is happening in a situation. If we are not in agreement, then we have a misunderstanding. Our assumptions about the social objects are made during the perception phase. When we interact with others, we need to be aware of the perception phase. It is at this stage that we can identify the wrong social objects resulting in a misunderstanding. Let me give you an example of this. Years ago, I was driving to the university on a snowy day. I noticed a taxi driver coming down a hill. And I said to myself, he's not going to be able to stop. 
And so I waited until he reached the bottom of the hill, and then I followed him. He came to another hill, and he struggled to get up that hill. I said to myself, I'm going to wait until he gets up that hill, or he's going to back right into me. He successfully got up the hill. I continued my way to drive to the university. And then all of a sudden, I notice he is backing into me. I say to myself, he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop. And bang, he hits me. Well, of course, we get out of the car, and he starts yelling at me. Why were you following so close behind me? Well, that was not my perception of the situation. And so I asked him, don't you look behind you before you back up? And all of a sudden, he became the nicest person I ever met. We had a disagreement about the social object, who was at fault. The perception phase is not observable only the resulting behavior. In a problematic situation, it's very important to pause and reassess our perspective about the social objects. We have to be able to make sense of the acts of others to have successful interactions. When we are in an ambiguous situation, it is very important to ask questions. Let's take a closer look at the perception phase and the cultural knowledge we use during this phase. Okay, we'll see you soon.